For project 50, sources in parallel, the voltage meter will be set to the 5 volt setting, and we will start with the slide switch set to position B. Now the battery and solar cell are wired in parallel. When the slide switch is set to the bead position, the meter records the voltage from the battery. When set to the C position, it measures the current of the solar cell, and the current of the solar cell will depend on how much light is on it. When I put my desk lamp right up to it, it measured, I would say, about 3.8 volts. Now when you push the press switch, it kind of connects the two sources together, and the meter will show the resulting voltage. For project 51, two in series, we're going to turn on the slide switch, move to position B, and please turn down your volume because of the horn. And both components, the LED and horn, come on. And then turning off the slide switch turns them both off. Now this is a series circuit, meaning that both components share the same path of current. If I was to remove one of these components from the circuit, like the horn, the LED in this case will stop working as well. You could think of a series circuit containing many lights, and if one light was to fail or burn out, all the other lights in that circuit will burn out as well, making it much harder to know which of the lights has failed and has to be replaced. The next project, two in parallel, has the horn and red LED connected in a parallel circuit. I will turn on the slide switch, volume warning, and now both components are on. When I remove just one of them, let's say the LED, the horn will remain on and its volume will not decrease. The brightness of the LED likewise will not decrease when I remove the horn. Each component has its own path for the current to flow through, even though both components use the same voltage. And most Christmas lights, for example, consist of parallel circuits because if one of the lights was to fail, the others would remain on it would, and it would also be easier to find out which light failed so that it could be replaced. For sound starter, we will turn on the slide switch, move it to position B, and while both LEDs come on, the horn will make little to no noise. It's pretty quiet, but when I push the press switch, volume warning please, the horn will become louder, even though not too, too loud. And the voltage produced will be lower when these sources are running something that needs lots of current, since the solar cell can only produce a small amount of current, even though I'm not using that right now. We are going to move the slide switch to position B, and you may need to give it a small push, but the motor will spin slowly, and the red LED will light. The motor is not spinning at full speed, even though it may appear to do so on camera, but it's not spinning at full speed because the LED acts like a resistor, limiting the current flowing to the motor. But when I push and hold down the press switch, the motor rotates at full speed because now the LED is bypassed and it turns off. When I release the press switch, the motor will slow down because now the LED has been re-included in the circuit. The current now can flow through it again and it's limiting the power through the motor. Project 55 is Big Blade Wind Horn. 
However, I was not able to successfully work this project, but I will tell you the principle. With the meter set to the 5 volt setting and the motor on the pivot point with the water mill attached, you would spin the blade counterclockwise and you'll see that the voltage meter increases, but the horn should sound. It does not when I try it. Spinning it counterclockwise produces negative voltage, which the meter cannot record. But the principle would be for the water mill to be able to produce electrical power for the horn. It's recommended that if you were to try this, carefully put it next to an electric fan so that it would have a steady wind. And if it's powerful enough, the horn will sound. Blocking the wind on one side of the fan with your hand may direct the airflow better and improve the performance of the makeshift fan that you made. For windy time, I cannot give you a full demonstration, but the principle of this project is to use wind power for to make the clock work. You would spin the water mill on the motor counterclockwise or have a steady strong wind blowing on it and if enough power is produced the capacitor will charge and supply energy to the clock even if the wind is not blowing because the clock uses little energy the capacitor can power it for a while the red LED will not light and it is used to prevent electricity from discharging from the capacitor through the motor when the wind is not blowing. This is a very clean way to power the clock. But once again, I could not get it to work, so I'm very sorry about that. Project 57 is wind charger with light. This project allows you to charge the battery powering the LED using wind power. So if you put the windmill in a wind that is strong enough, the battery will charge and the current will be measured on the meter, which is currently set to the 0.5 milliamp setting. And then you can use that power for the LED to provide light because sometimes the wind may blow when you do not need light, yet it is not blowing when you need the light. And without a battery to hold that energy, you cannot use the light when the wind is not blowing. So the battery solves this problem. Unfortunately, I couldn't get this project to work either, but I want to explain to you the basic principle. And then for project 58, you would simply replace the LED with the horn. And now the wind will charge the battery for the horn. I'm going to just quickly put it on. Please lower your volume. And there you have it. Here is kickstart motor. This project is pretty simple, yet interesting. We will move the slide switch over to position C, and that will charge up the C5 capacitor. Then when I move the switch back to position B, the motor will spin on its own a brief moment. Let's do this again. That's because the capacitor can only store a very small amount of energy and therefore can only give the motor a very tiny spin, like a little kick. But if I had a much larger capacitor, the motor could spin longer and faster.